Yo folks and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about Precon Grandmasters, a team fight tactics, April Fool's jokes by Side Games. We do first impressions, beginner guides, tier list, and all that stuff. Let's jump right into this. So we're gonna go into the tutorial phase so we can see a gameplay sort of overview with this game. Is this an actual game that you can get your hicks into and actually have a good time on? It is, I would say. This is not a gotcha game where you would summon. Technically, the entire gameplay is a gotcha in some way. So in this pickup guild sort of section, you'll be granted a random guild. In this section, it's going to be the Gourmet Guild with Pecorine, Kokoro, and our wonderful waifus, Carol. So we're going to be presented with those characters to be like, hey, you know, you have these characters you start out with. And these are going to be the random characters you're provided with. So right here, it's telling you, you can have Pecorine and you can also have these other characters as well. I can't remember every single waifu's name, but Pecorine, she is going to have a tier two fashion where essentially since we have a dupe of her, we will get tier two. And then we can also grab this character as well. I'm spacing on the names because there's plenty of waifus. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember all of them. Tell me to place Pekko. Reason for that is because she's a defender and also she has the HP sort of team affinity. It's going to tell me to place this character, Mimi, that I remembered her name finally, because she is going to be a heart based character and also a shield or defender based character. So we get the team bonuses right here since these two will get us the HP bonuses. All right. And then right now we're going to be in the PVE or PVP section technically. Only in the tutorial phases, this is going to be occurring where you know you only have two opponents, likely we'll have eight opponents, and everyone always starts out with 40 health. That is how these team fight tactics sort of style games go. And everyone has the same health, everyone is at the same starting point, everyone has all of the characters unlocked. There's a lot of things going on. You can see I dealt 10 damage. The reason why that occurs is because we have two of our characters left. And those two characters equate to 10 damage. And since we had more than 10 gold, we get a bonus plus two gold. And then we also get a plus one gold based off of our win streak. And you can tell we have a win streak because it's going to be orange. And sometimes it's not going to show it here, but you would get like a plus one on the right hand corner. We'll show it a little bit later. It's going to be saying, hey, you can grab another copy of Pekko and we can grab another copy of Pekko. And then there's also going to be two star versions. Just know you can get two star characters and they're going to be based off of this multiplier right here. We have a 0% chance to get three star characters, four star characters, and five star characters. We can grab the Sumigi right here, and then we only have two characters, even though we can place three. And this is based off of the team level right here. It is insanely reminiscent, and you saw we team leveled up, and now we can place four characters. We're gonna place our Sumigi. We're gonna place our Tom or Hiori's right here. I almost got the, you know, our furry waifus mixed up. And now we have team synergies aligned because of all the different characters we have assigned. This is going to be the PvE section. Essentially, when you're or when you are fighting enemies that are not PvP based. These are guaranteed wins in these team fight tactic style sort of games. We also got a piece of gear because we face these PVE opponents on the second round. It doesn't usually happen on the first round. Sometimes it does happen. For the most part, you can get some gear when you're facing PVE opponents. Now we have three star characters because we have a chance at getting three star units, which is 15%. It's going to be telling us to get Kauri's right here. Kauri's going to be a decent assassin unit. Not to mention she has three abilities because she is a three star unit. I don't know if that's how it applies every single time. And then we get a couple of copies of Pecorine right here. Now our Pecorine is going to be tier three or rainbow. And you can see the breakdowns right here where three tier ones equal one tier two or tier gold. And then three tier golds will equal one tier three or tier rainbow. All right. So that's how these team fight tactic style games goes. If you actually like this sort of gameplay, you can play like team fight tactics that's based off of League of Legends that's made by Riot Games, which I greatly enjoy. Hence why I understand the mechanics, even though this is going to be in Katakana, Hiragana, Kanji, all the different moon runes or you know, languages we don't understand in the Japanese languages and all that stuff. It's telling you can place more units. We have more team bonuses because of all the different units that we have on the field. If you can check it, we actually have Hyori and Kaori who can make up the assassin portion. HP portion, we have Pekko and Mimi. And then for the attack speed buff, we have Sumige and Kaori. It's actually a really fantastic team to start out with. And now we will be dealing 30 damage because of all the characters we have on the field. 
there we go we dealt 30 damage right there so those are going to be the rough mechanics on this princess connect grandmaster sort of gameplay if you've played any sort of team fight tactics you're very familiar with it if you have no idea what's going on it's all essentially based off of the teams or characters that you have on the field creating bonus stats for your characters now let's go ahead and cover the tier list and beginner guides and tips and stuff this is created by Taylor, TaylorMan6595, Musi, Krone, and Camille. So these are amazing peoples. They translated all of the different characters and their abilities in case you guys want to see it. And all the differences between three stars, four stars, and two stars, and one stars, right? And let's go ahead and jump into the tips and tricks portions. So there's going to be parts where you can gold stack, where if you have more than 10 gold, you'll get an extra two gold, like I showcased earlier. So if you have 30 gold stack, you can get a bonus six gold. Gold farming is insanely important for these team fight tactics or auto chess style sort of games. And then you can get streak bonuses, which will grant you more gold, which is, you know, that plus one gold that we got from like the orange numbers that you guys saw earlier. And then items can be freely unequipped and re-equipped. This is not the same as the team fight tactics for League, So this is a nice bonus, I think. I don't know if that's entirely accurate. Feel free to correct me down in the comments. And then you can also do things with the shops in the bottom right hand corner. And that will allow you to buy units, which you saw earlier, where you were able to buy copies of Peko to get her to the tier three or rainbows. Here's going to be a look at the tier list. The most important part about this tier list, Taylor pretty much said it where if you do not have any synergy whatsoever, then it doesn't matter if you're using the best units in the game. If they do not work as a cohesive team, then nothing is going to come to fruition. So for example, even if you ran Monica, Yukari, Ruka, if they don't have like some sort of alignment with the team synergies or they don't have like some sort of type synergy, then it's not going to work. For example, you need at least two of these attack buff units in order to get the actual attack buff. So the increased attack power will not apply unless you have two of those same units. But anyways, that's going to be a look at some of the tips and tricks and tier lists and stuff entirely subjective because everything is subjugated towards the teams. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main battle or the gameplay features of Princess Connect Grandmasters. We're right now in a queue, so we're queuing up with eight other people. This is the same as League of Legends and Team Fight Tactics, auto chess style sort of games where you can't just technically play by yourself. It's all PVP based. And I know a lot of this will turn people off because the original Princess Connect is mostly a PVE style game where it's clan battle, there's 30 members, and everyone's sort of participating and getting in on the fun. This is more solo base. You are entirely placed upon your skill. We're placed in our guild, which is led by Labritha, and we these are gonna be our starter units, the units that we're going to be beginning with. So right here, we have the couple of options. We can pick up our Miyakos for a Link character. For now, I'm not going to pick up anyone and I'm actually going to sell all of my units and I'm only going to be leaving Lima. I think that's a character that I'm going to be sticking with. So let's go ahead and sell, sell, sell. And let's go ahead and place our Lima right here. Then we have seven gold. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is so we can keep up with our gold economy. Right here, you can see this person, they have zero gold, which is fine, by the way. At the beginning phases, you can totally do that. And everyone's pretty much guaranteed a win, mostly because of the fact that this is going to be the PVE section. So right now we have 10 gold and that's going to be good for us because we can get another you know, extra set of gold depending on we win or lose. Ooh, Monica is a phenomenal unit. So this is very tempting. So I could grab two Monicas right here and come up with a dub. So I'm actually going to do that, even though we don't get a team bonus right here. And the reason for that is because Monica is actually a good unit. And what I like to do is place my DPS units usually in the corner, the range ones specifically. But since Monica is more of a physical base unit, it's fine. If I was gold farming and being efficient, I would have have bought the two Monicas. I would have left my lone Lima and you know, gold farmed so that I would have that 10 gold. So I would have extra gold starting out in the fight. So, and the reason why gold is so important is so you can buy more characters in this section. You can reroll the different characters as you see fit. And it is important to manage your team level right here in the left hand corner. So you can manage the rates or the characters that you'll be getting as you are leveling up. 
So for this example, I would want a Bayesian unit, but right now we're not fitting any of these requirements. So we might not be picking anyone up for this section in particular. Yeah, we'll grab. Yeah, we have like our Monica's right here. Outward speaking, this isn't really advantageous to us, but at the same time, this person only used one unit in particular. So we're at an advantage. I'm curious if they are gold farming, but at the same time, it almost doesn't matter because we have a win streak. So we get some extra gold and we also have like the 12 gold. So, you know, the 10 gold stacking is still working. We need 20 gold in order to get extra gold. So this person lost and we won. For now, we are starting off with a good start, but at the same time, we could have been more efficient if we didn't buy the two Monica's. And just note with the team levels, I haven't invested anything into it. And this is all based off of the PVE sections. Oh, this is amazing. So we get the Ayumis right here. And I could pick up Coke Rose because she is going to be an evasion style unit. And I could pick up this character as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pick her up. And we're gonna place these two units down or three units. That way we can get some bonuses. Lima is not that important at the very beginning and all of these characters are physical. Oh my gosh, they have five units. There's no way we can beat this at the very start of the game. Yeah, this is rough for us. We are facing a very stacked team right here because this five, wow, they spent all of their gold at the very start of the game. They are not gold farming whatsoever, but this person, they definitely have like an idea of what they're doing because it's kind of rare for people to stack that much characters at the very start of the fights, but it's absolutely okay because now we have a lose streak. We're also maintaining our gold streak of having, you know, more than 10 gold. So now we have 23 gold. We could re-roll our characters and notice how I keep saying gold within the videos because gold and the economy that you have and purchasing units is insanely important within these games and I'm gonna go ahead and pick up two Eucharist. Eucharist is actually a phenomenal character. Carol is actually really good as well. I could buy out this entire slot and I would feel great about it but for now, I'm not going to, I'm gonna get, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get Shinobu. And the reason for that is because I want more of like these buffs with like the shield characters. It's fine for the PVE sections when you don't have too many units because the PVE sections are guaranteed wins. It doesn't count as a win streak or a lose streak. So you'll see like this blue one lose streak, it's gonna stay the same number. I want you guys to sort of pay attention to that. And units like Monica, they can teleport based off of the HP of the units and the different effects that you have. It's sort of like how Monica has that the attack speed buff. I would say in Princess Connect Grandmasters, they have entirely different functionality as how they perform, which is somewhat annoying in some ways. And I think I'm going to go for the evasions right here because we have enough units on, you know, the evasions. And I'm going to be placing it like this. We're going to do something like this where our archer is going to be sitting in the back. We have one tier gold. So we have this is going to be a 4v4. They technically have two Limas, but I would say our team synergy is a little bit better just because we have some evasion. So it's going to be a 3v3 right here. Hopefully we can win Monica doing the big slashies. Krokoro went down. Oh my goodness, it's going to be a 2v2 right here. Hopefully Monica can get the dub. I don't think so. We might be keeping our lose streak, but at the same time, we have 23 gold. It's going to be a close one. Oh my gosh, we keep our lose streak. That is not good whatsoever. But at the same time, we still have some decent amounts of golds. So we're not doing that hot. We're technically second to last on this section. But at the same time, we have a lot of gold. We have a lot of room to play with. We can still come back. This hopium, copium, at the end of the day, I want more gold so that we can progress better. So we have 34 gold now. So if we lose again, that is kind of advantageous to us as well. I could level up, but at the same time, I think I'm going to be focusing on my gears right here. So we have the ability to possibly get a two star cook rose. We're going to grab these two. We maintain our 30 gold, which is really good. And then I'm going to go ahead and place oh man i need to equip some gears so i think we're gonna win this match right here but we can still equip some gear on our monica i believe so monica is wearing that we're gonna put this on our this character oh my gosh i'm spacing on names 
put this on Matsuri, and then we're gonna put this on our Shinobus. My goodness, we do not take the dub here, so we keep our loose streak. That's fine, because we still get some loose streak gold. We're still at 30 gold as well. And we don't lose too much HP because there's only two units. So I think we're going to be at the bottom four right here. We take 23. So you don't need to entirely lose in order to get BP or in order to rank up. So right now we're at 45 gold. We're still good on our gold farm. I can still come back. I want to say even though you're losing this many times, it is still somewhat advantageous to you. So long as you keep some sort of a streak in those regards. So I could pick up a Kari right here. Or is that Yori? I'm pretty sure that's Akari. We could refresh. There's 42 gold. I'm going to go ahead and grab our Kokoros. I'll grab another Akari. So now we're at 39 gold. I'll grab another Akari. And oh, I could grab a Monica. I can't. Yeah, can I do that? Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Oh no, can I not place my units? Uh, this might be another loose streak. It's fine. So long as we can survive somewhat, we should be okay. If not, we're going to have to pretty much win on every single round. This might be a super lose for us. Hopefully it's not too brutal. We're doing some damage. We're taking out some of their units. We're not going to get the win. There's just no way. Just because of the fact that they had more units than us. And they're also, they have two tier golds. But if we could take down one more unit, that would be really good. Just... Just take her out. Take her out. Take her out. Come on. You can do it. Oh my God. We're so close. Arr! Okay. So that's fine. We have a four losing streak. We have 50 gold right here. Now I'm going to blow all of my gold. Unless we're facing a PVE sort of stage on the next one. I think I sort of doubt that. So we can get a couple of copies of a Yumi right here. So I'm going to go ahead. Or Shinobu. I'm going to take advantage of that. And then I'm going to grab her. And we could refresh one time and I could grab a copy of her. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to level up. We're going to place a Yukri down here. So we have two of those. We're going to place her up there. And I think with this, it's either going to be a PvE match or a PvP. We're probably going to win this simply because we have more tier twos and we have better units on the field. I believe we have more team synergy. We have two healers. We have three evasion units and some sword buffs, so there's no way we can lose. In some ways, we can make a comeback from this because we did a good job managing our gold. I don't think we can get the dub from this point over because when you get a win streak, it's just better. But if we can keep our win streak from this point forward, we should be pretty good as far as I can tell. Losing multiple times in a row in this game, it is somewhat advantageous even though it doesn't feel good just because we maintained our gold farm. I'm repeating the same things. There's a reason for it. And I am very aware of what we are doing. So I could use her. She is actually going to be pretty phenomenal for the teams we are using. And I'm gonna keep our 30 gold right here, 35 gold, but I'd rather keep our gold stack. That way we can farm more gold for this level in particular. I'm also kind of curious if these PvE stages, we get extra gold for beating them. There's no way you can lose these stages, in my opinion, just because of the fact that it's one of those things where this PvE boss will not beat the amount of characters we have. So we have 39 gold right here. Do we get some extra gold from that? It'll tell us nonetheless. And I'm going to go ahead and place these on some characters. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter at this stage because we're just sort of going with the flow. And there we go. As long as everyone's equipped with something, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of our Kari's. I don't think we can get a two-star version of her. And we're gonna get a copy of her. We're gonna go ahead and refresh. We're gonna go ahead and level up as well. Level up one more time. So we have eight gold right here. Place this one and I think we'll place this. Oh no, that wasn't good. That was not a good idea, but at the same time, we have more characters. We should be able to win. The only thing that matters from this point forward, since we're a level eight already, is that we will have the ability to get within the top four. I don't think we can entirely win. Like I said, this QQX loud person, they were curb stomping everyone. I think they lost only once and went from there. But now we are no longer losing. We're on a two win streak, but our gold farm is non-existent now because I'm pretty much all in, as you can see, round 11, and we only have 13 gold. 
And there is some disadvantages by doing your team levels up too quickly because that means your rates for the stores. I won't be able to get one star characters as easily. I'll be getting 7% you know, on the five stars. I'll be more likely to get two stars and three stars. Probably not going to happen that I can tier three a character. That is all I can say with that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a Ninon right here. And I want to replace somebody for some evasions. And you can see they're doing the cone formation. I'm sort of doing the cone formation similar to them. QQX Loud, they definitely know what they're doing. If I could get the dub on them, that would be huge because they're the strongest player. Let's see how this goes. I believe they are, they're not number one, but they're damn close and I would like some revenge. So I think we're gonna get the dub right here. There's only one unit left. There we go, very nice. They put a lot into their early game and now we're carrying or catching up on our late to mid game. So that's what we like to see. It's kind of weird because at the very start of this game, you saw that I had no advantage or no way of winning this. But as I kept my whips about me, as I knew what I was building, building things where I have more team synergies, job synergies right here on the left hand corner, then I was actually able to take advantage of these things. Now it doesn't really matter whether I can get the dubs in some ways. We're just refreshing our shop so we can get more dupes of our characters so we can get them to tier two. And the hope and prayer is that we can roll random characters. And this is sort of where gotcha and luck plays into the game based off of the team levels you have. Now I am at a disadvantage because a lot of the characters that I'm using, they're not high starred. So when I'm rolling in the store, technically speaking, I have lower chance of getting, you know, these two, three star versions. I'm using a bunch of two and three stars. I'm not sure if it makes sense but the probability is lower. The odds are stacked against me. That's what I want to say, but I just want to roll the characters. It's almost impossible for me to get tier threes, but at the same time, I could grab this Christina right here and there's no way I'm going to get the Shinobu. So I could sell a character to get our Saren's right here because I believe Saren is going to be a pretty awesome character and I could stack some units for invincibility. I think we're still good right here. We are going to be fighting this person right here. And I'm pretty sure we're going to win clearly just because of the fact we have more tier twos and we just had better gold farm management. But in order to get the actual win for this entire fight, we have to have just better luck on rolling characters so we can get more tier two units. I wanna replace my healer, so to speak. Yeah, I'm just gonna get her because I wanna, we keep our gold streak of having 20 gold. We also upgrade our normal shories to tier two and I could replace a unit in order to make the tier twos. We are still doing just fine. I think I need to place shory back in just so I can get this bonus right here. That way everything bounces out with the damage that we're dealing. So we can get a team level up, which makes sense. Level nine is going to be the max team level. And now I'm apparently going to be the number one. I have 43 gold. We have a five win streak. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and with this purchase, gonna get the 22 golds, even though, yeah, there's no way I can get a rainbow version of a character. So I'm gonna place our shories right here and let's go ahead and refresh our shops. It doesn't make sense at this point of the game to see if we can get better RNG. We're not gonna get the sword buffs and other buffs. So there's no point in trying to look into that. And grab our Ninon, grab a Christina right here. And hopefully we can beard stronger units. They have a tier three Sumigi. So this could be a pretty difficult fight, but I believe we have more tier twos. We have pretty phenomenal team synergy as it is. So I'm hoping with our team synergies, we could take out the Sumigis and their teams. We have more units on the board. Sort of speaking, we have more invincibility at the same time. We are definitely taking the dub on this one, playing it by very skin of our teeth. So it's Kiku X Aud and me, the two EN players are the two people with English names. Team fight tactics, we know our stuff. Let's go ahead. We cannot grab that Christina right there. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's go ahead and see that. Yeah, let's definitely grab that Saren right there. Ooh, baby, let's grab our Yui's right here as well. So I am going to be replacing our Yukri's because we still have a tier three healer. 
And then I kind of want to replace our Christina's right there. I feel like Christina isn't that good. All right, they have stacked tier twos, but we have tier twos as well. But I feel like their entire team is just tier twos. So this is going to be definitely a close fight. This is all just based off of who rolled better characters at this point and who built a better team. I think they built a better team just looking at it because they have a tier two Nenica and Nenica is really good at wiping multiple units as once. So with this, it is what it is. I think they're going to get the dub. They have way too many units left alive, but hey, we did our comeback story. We came in second place, but I think they just did it better overall when it came to managing their gold and everything. So, you know, hats off to QQX Loud. We did it. We got the little statues for getting this far, and we also got plus 40 out of our road to getting out of silver and stuff. But at the end of it, in case you're like, hey, you know, this person is Grandmaster or they have higher ranks than everyone. Also, while we're doing the PVPs, this is going to be part of like the segmented story in case you want to do it. But we did unlock our Yui's. We also got this little trophy right here because we completed the little events within the story. So don't be just too discouraged in case you can't tackle stuff. We also unlocked the boss battle. We can play that if we want to, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Well, we're talking about Princess Connect Grandmasters or Precon Grandmasters. Change my captain or my main waifu to Yui right here. Do I think this game is going to be monetized ever? Is it coming to a full release based off of all of the 3D characters that we have in this game? Like kind of insane that everyone has their own 3D model. Personally speaking, I don't think this is going to be a full game. Mostly because of the fact that these 3D models could have been pre-created and they just want to see how people sort of like these 3D models. There's no advertisement for it. There's no infrastructure. There's no business model. When it comes to these team fight tactics style sort of games, the only way to make money is via skins because it doesn't make sense to lock certain characters in order to have an advantage or in order to make a win in these team fight tactics style sort of games. Team fight tactics is all skill oriented where you pick the right characters, you have the correct team synergies, and that's how you flow. If you make it so that certain characters are locked behind paywalls, then team fight tactics sort of loses its edge in some ways or auto chess, so to speak. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed my review of Princess Connect Grandmasters. I greatly enjoyed this game while it was out. I hope that it will come out more in a substantial format in the near future. But anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once you have 35,000 subs, we'll be doing a giveaway. I don't know if we did the 30Ks or not yet. We'll see. But thanks so much. Have yourself a fantastic day and see you guys in the next one.